Tommy's mom took him to the beach one day. That evening when Tommy's dad came home from work, he said to Tommy, did you play with other kids at the beach? Tommy said, yes, Daddy, we did play. I did play with other kids at the beach. And his dad said, were they boys or were they girls? And Tommy thought for a moment and said, I couldn't tell. They didn't have their swimming suits on. (laughs) Yeah, it's one of those kind of silly, but you get it kind of things, right? I mean, it's about training. This young Tommy was trained to uh, know that boys and girls wear different kinds of of bathing suits. So that's how you identify them. But of course, it's it's this way about everything. We're all trained from the get-go. First by our family, then school, friends at school, our church, our political party, clubs that we might belong to. They all tell us what is to be seen and the label that we put on that particular thing. And while on the one hand, this is very helpful because it moves us rather uh, easily uh, toward making decisions because you, you can uh, understand rather quickly when things have labels on them. But on the other hand, it, is, it creates a, a, a struggle within us because we begin to see the label and not the person. The labels in Jesus' time were much stronger than the labels in our time. He lived in a class society. Today's story uh, presents a story uh, in which he ignores the label. And in fact, if you look at the ministry of Jesus, particularly in Luke, It's just one after the other after the other. He interacts with people who are labels in their society, lepers, Roman soldiers, tax collectors as today, and he refuses to relate to them as labels, but relates to them as real human beings. He shows us a way And this way is to fearlessly reject labels. To be present to people, not labels. And to be with people. To know what it's like to be in their skin. So he does this with Zacchaeus. He, is, he fearlessly refuses labels because there's one heck of a big label on Zacchaeus because he's a tax collector. First of all, he's Jewish. Second of all, he's collecting taxes for the Romans. So not only is he a tax collector, he's a traitor. Oh yeah, did we say that he's short? <laughs> he's short too. The tax collectors in the ancient world uh, were told, were given the position to collect a certain amount of money. Any money that they were going to make, they added on to that amount of money. So there was kind of the regular amount that they would take from people. But then, uh, if they thought maybe, you know, they could get a little more out of Lee than they could out of Sandy, so they'd, you know, squeeze Lee a little tighter and try to get more money out of her. So they were uh, dishonest as well. I just want to be clear about one thing. We do have a tax collector in our congregation. <laughs> Lauren Stuck. <laughs> She's shaking her head. She is not one of these tax collectors. <laughs> no, she just gets, you know, we need to let her to get in to see Jesus. You know, 
She's <laughs> so, why do you have to be fearless about this? Because labels carry within them a hierarchy of power, a differential of power. When you use a label, you, while on the one hand they can be easy and more simple to use, but you, you can distribute power in a particular way. Uh, yesterday, Kate Russian uh, spoke to us, uh, those of us who are able to be at this uh, um, gathering around words matter. And she said that she no longer uses the word slave. Slave is a category. She says, she doesn't speak of slaves. She speaks of people who were kidnapped. Moms and dads and aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters and neighbors next door. People who are connected to a larger life and a larger fabric in a society to whose, uh, for whom the loss of them is, is a major thing. And of course, they are enslaved by someone else. It's not that they are slaves, they are enslaved. But if you call them a slave, it's a way of making them into a category that you don't have to worry about who they are as a person and all these other relationships. We do it with um, illegal immigrants and undocumented workers as well. If you call someone an illegal immigrant, you know, you have a person that is illegal. Well, people are not illegal, but if you call them undocumented workers, then they are a worker. They're trying to make money for their family. They're trying to send it back home or support a family here. Oh, they don't have the documentation to do it. Do you, do you see how language itself carries within it a hierarchy, a differential in power? And when we use labels, we fall into that use of power unconsciously and not even meaning to do it. So we need be fearless in the rejection of labels because once you start to question that power, the powerful will intimidate and will even uh, take action against you. I believe Jesus was crucified because he used he refused to use these labels of people who are on the outside of his society. The large label for Zacchaeus was impure, unclean. That's a religious label, which meant not only is he rejected by these particular people here, but he is outside of the realm of God's love and care altogether. So, number one. Fearlessly reject the use of labels. Number two, be present to a person, not a label. You got to note how Jesus is present to all these people. He ignores the labels that they're using. You know, you can imagine him walking down the, the road. The people are all, all gathered along the side road to, to see this um, rather famous healer. And there's a little scuffle among the people. Uh, he doesn't know quite what's going on, but somebody's trying to get in. But they don't let this person in. And then maybe, this is all in my imagination, uh, maybe somebody throws an elbow to an ear and somebody else yells out, Hey, Zacchaeus, why don't you go tax the rear end of a camel? <laughs> yeah, humiliate him publicly. That's a great thing to do. And so he takes off and he scrambles up a tree and, and Jesus sees him scramble up the tree. And, and in my imagination, Jesus begins to wonder about this. Huh? He's already fearlessly rejected the labels, but who is this man? And again, we have to use our imagination a bit. We have to begin to wonder, huh? I, I imagine Jesus goes, well, he's short. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Jesus had the experience of uh, when he was a kid, 
uh, seeing other kids bully some short kids, as we know can happen. And so he begins to think about what his life has been like. Oh, he was bullied from when he was a little kid. As he grew up, he still got bullied. Huh. And then when the job of tax collector opened up, he decided, why not take it? (laughs) You know, I'm on the outside anyway. I'm an outcast anyway. Why not get rich on it? (laughs) Okay. Doesn't change the standing in the community. Everybody else still hates him, but now they have a real reason to do it. I don't know. I'm just imagining when you're going to be present to a person, you have to be curious about who they actually are, what the dynamics are that drive their life. You have to come to that place, to an understanding that there's a place where they felt helpless. Like Chris shared with us today, there's this place where he felt powerless. And of course, all of us are. I mean, we're human beings. We're not fully in control of our lives or anyone else's life. And at that place, when you come to that place in a person, you begin to resonate with who they are. The image of God lifts up in them. So, So we're fearless in our rejection of labels. And we we are relating to persons, not labels. Now, in the midst of this, Jesus stops as he's walking down. And he looks up at Zacchaeus and he just says, Zacchaeus, get down here. I'm going to your house to eat. Actually, I don't think he said to eat. I made that part up. He's going to your house. But it implies eating. And they grumble, the people in the crowd, all the ones who are labeling, they grumble, and they, they say he's going to eat with a sinner. That's a big label, unclean. He's a, he's a sinner. So you know what happens when you eat with a sinner? You become a sinner too. You become infected by whatever their uh, uncleanness is. And now you are tossed outside of the community of grace, you are rejected. You are not accepted. So here's Jesus. He does this thing. He goes all the way. He is with him all the way. He's going to feel what it's like to be in the skin of Zacchaeus in front of this whole crowd. He just says, I'm going to eat at your house. Nah, 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 nah. I'm a sinner too. That's a loose translation. But this amazing thing happens at that moment. Zacchaeus, without confessing sin, without professing faith, it says he stood there. In other words, he's still in front of the crowd. And he says, I will give half of my money to the poor and four times to anyone that I have cheated. Whoa! What happened there? I mean, it seems as if Jesus is magic. How did he get this change, this transformation to happen in Zacchaeus' life? But he's not magic. He knows how people work. He knows that if you ignore the label, you can get down to that place where people actually reveal to you what they long for in life, this image of God. And if you can be with them, 
in that so that they know that they aren't alone. They can throw away all of those defenses that they've ever used, all of those things that they used to prove that they were better than everyone else or that they were doing as some kind of revenge, perhaps. And they, they become the people they were created to be. Reject those labels. Relate to people, not labels. Be with people. Know what it's like to be in their skin. Okay, I'm just about done. But I want to talk about something that you all really want to talk about, which is the campaign. Oh, gee. What are we going to do about this? (laughs) Well, and that's... That is, that's exactly right. Some people will vote this way, and some people will vote another way. But our nation has become uh, such a labeling nation that we don't see people as people. So Sandy might make a statement like that, and then our next people who are on the other side of the fence might then make all kinds of assumptions about her. Use that as a label. Or somebody could say, well, I'm going to vote for Hillary. And then other people would say, oh, well, that means that this person thinks this and this and this and this. You know, we've gone way off the track. To call Mexicans racists, to call Trump followers a basket of deplorables, Those are labels. Those are not human beings. And Trump himself and Hillary herself, they're not labels. They are human beings. My concern is not about the two of them. It's about us as a nation. Can we actually talk to each other like human beings? Can we be curious enough to go beyond labels, to really try to understand how another person arrived at their particular conclusions? Can we be with them enough to have an understanding about how they may have arrived here so that we might feel some of those very same things that they feel and then have a real conversation, not be throwing posters at people from across the road at each other, which is what our national conversation has really uh, fallen to. So, I would say Jesus has given us this road, this map, this way to follow. Reject. Fearlessly reject labels. Be present to people, not labels. And be with people to such a point you know what it's like to live in their skin. And who knows? You think Trump and Hillary will give half of what they have to the poor and then give four times to people that they may have defrauded? Well, maybe that's a little too much to hope for. But we can have hope for the future from this level, from your life and from mine, by walking in that way. Amen. Chris, they're in a clapping mood today. I like this.